Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All right, just ahead of John Shannon, a reminder that uh, Able Auctions is our title. Oh, yeah. Sponsor. Uh, Victor Victoria, 82 musical comedy. This is a great lead into John Shannon. 82. Yeah, 1982. Yeah. But yeah. there was a sports component to it in that one of the co-stars uh, alongside Julie Andrews was former Detroit Lions great, the late Alex Karras, who was also in Blazing Saddles. Did not know that. He was a big name uh, back in the day. Was it Mongo he played in Blazing Saddles? Great uh, defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions. Ryan, I know you don't care about this stuff. No, he doesn't. There he doesn't. are people who want to learn and yeah. people who do want to remember this, want to reminisce a bit. In the 80s, the best decade of all time, uh, Ryan, whether you like it or not. Uh, joining us now, he remembers Alex Karras. He remembers uh, Victor Victoria. I didn't earlier And the on. 80s. John Shannon. How are you, sir? NHL I'm great. It was, it, it was written and produced uh, by uh, Blake Edwards, who was Julie Andrews' husband at the oh. time. And the other star wow. of the movie was the famous, the great James Garner. Yes, yes. Who, um, Donnie and I are the only ones that remember that he played Maverick on television. And, and let's not forget the Rockford Files. Yeah, oh, I, they, I mean, that was good. Even, yeah. be, even before Rockford yeah. Files. Oh, no, he okay. Was, he, was, he was Bart Maverick. I'm not so sure I remember a Bart Maverick, but <laughs> if you do, John, that's fine. I love, See, I'm, I'm interested in learning, unlike yeah, others, no. and I'm sure you remember Alex Karras as well. Well, and, you know, and, and the great thing, Alex Karras was uh, undoubtedly one of the great defensive linemen in the history of the National Football League, and people forget that uh, he and Paul Horning were kicked out of the league for a year for gambling. Well, that's right. That's right. 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 Yeah. No, Very sorry. good. Just, Full of trivia today. No, very good. And I believe Alex Karras was also on Monday, Monday Night Football. All he right. lasted one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rangers over the Lightning 6-2. Were the Rangers uh, that good, or did that have a lot to do with Lightning rust? Um, I think the Rangers were that good last night. Uh, I, I really do. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, if you're a Tampa fan, you shouldn't be too worried. Uh, this is a team that does know how to win, does know how to rebound. Um you know, I I think that a nine days off probably didn't help them, um, but at the same time, uh, they know they'll be fine. I mean, I, I you know remember they lost the first game of the Maple yeah. Leaf series five nothing, so it, it's uh, it's not as if they they haven't felt adversity before in these playoffs or in the last three years. They'll be fine. Um, we I don't know how long you've been watching our show, but um, uh, today at least. But we uh, ran an ex excerpt of the Rangers 2018 rebuild uh, letter, which uh, spoke to focus, and obviously things have worked out. Uh, you can say what you want about their UFA signings and their trades, but they're a young team. They draft well, all of that. Um, uh, my retort to that was I, I have a hard time letting go of Wade Redden and, 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 and Chris Drury and all Bobby Halik, all the bad UFA signings they made not that long before it. H historically, would you consider the Rangers now, John, a model NHL franchise in terms of building? Uh, that might be a bit of a stretch. Okay. Um, you, you know, be, and, and one of the reasons I say it's a stretch is you talked about their great drafting. Well, you know, you go back to 2017 when they took Heedle. 2018 uh, was one of the other guys on the kid line. And then it was uh, be, th those. That was Jeff Gordon. <laughs> so, so a, a yep. model franchise well, doesn't necessarily fire the general manager. Yes. Uh, over the summertime, uh, in in that scenario. Now, those draft picks, they, the last five draft picks they have, including Braden Snyder, who's mm. a, a young defenseman out of the Western League, is they've done great. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the, the, the tweaks that are made, uh, that have been made over the last little while with Chris Drury as the manager have helped them. Uh, and I, and I do think that, uh, the desire to be tougher, uh, tougher to play against after the Tom Wilson incident, uh, has probably proved beneficial to them. Model franchise might be a bit of a stretch. Okay. Uh, John, the Oilers and Avalanche, I'm going to guess. You're going to think there's going to be another uh, ton of goals tonight. Uh, Pavel Francis is going to start net for the Avalanche. Mike Smith, uh, are we going to see another high-scoring game tonight? 
without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> without a doubt. You know, Francouz did was very good uh, when he took over from Kemper in game one. Um, and I and I think that as soon as both coaches agree, they don't mind the matchup, McDavid versus McKinnon, yep. uh, you're going to have a lot of uh, explosive offensive uh, opportunities, uh, but you're also going to have some times in your own zone where you're, you know, you've been left exposed. And, and so that puts a ton of pressure on both sets of defensemen. And that to me is the key is, is Darnell nurse did not have a very good game in game one. Uh, he has to be much mm -hmm. more in control. They can't take as many chances uh, as they did say in the Calgary series or against Los Angeles, they have to be defense first, a hundred percent, and then they need some support from uh, uh, from the forwards. So if, if you're going to play run and gun, which both teams appear they want to, when you want Connor against uh, Nate, uh, but there's going to have to be some defensive responsibilities that come to the fore for both clubs. And whoever adapts to that quicker, I think, has a better chance of winning. Uh, John, some changes in Vancouver player development. Uh, scouts a couple of weeks ago, training staff a couple of weeks ago. They're making subtle changes, John. They're not the big ones that everybody wants yet. JT Miller, everybody wants a Miller trade, but they seem to be going along at, a, at, at their own pace, not rushing this. Well, I, I mean, I, I think the key date to watch for, Rick, and, and you know this better than I do, the key date is July 7th. You know, that's going to be the day when uh, the draft occurs in Montreal and, and that gives Jim Rutherford a chance and, and Patrick Alvin a chance to walk around the floor yep. and discuss scenarios with the other managers in the league to what works and what doesn't. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of teams over the last few years and Calgary comes to mind as what the things they've done right on the draft floor. And there's no reason to think that Vancouver could, couldn't do that as well. Um, and then it's six days later for free agency. So I, I, we, our, our hockey biological clock is still a little off. Yeah. You know, here we are in the first week in June. We should be close to yeah. the end of the Stanley Cup final. We're not there yet. We still think that things should be happening. We're not there yet. We're just two weeks delayed and everything. So I, I, I think that we're going to start hearing about stuff maybe around the 21st or 22nd of June as opposed to this week. Yeah. Uh, John, what was your take on uh, Kale McCarr's goal in, in controversial goal in, in Game One of the Western Final? Well, I, w I, I wouldn't have called it a goal. Uh, I, I thought he was offside, but in talking to the people at the National Hockey League, they explained it, and based on the letter of their law and how they understand it, then they made the correct call. Um, my concern for this situation and the one in calgary last week is that we're getting into minutia guys we're getting into such minutia uh and i don't think that's the spirit of the game i think that interpretations now uh have to be made uh and and i i'm not sure i i like this one i understood it he did he and, and it's the difference between possession and control um, did he have possession maybe, but he didn't have control. So that allowed the forward to come out before he touched the puck again. I get it. I understand it, but I'm not sure I, I believe it. Um, and, and, but I'm very respectful of what those guys do. It's a tough job, but really what's happening now, in my opinion, is they're getting so deep into the minutia. It's, it's kind of, it's ruining it, I think, for, for many people. Yeah, yeah. my take was like, possession control, that's a gray area, but there was no offensive advantage for Nakushkin. Do you think this is going to be talked about in the offseason, John? Maybe maybe a change is coming? Uh, I, you know what? It, it, yes, the, it will be talked about. Uh, this is, you know, the, the way the process works in the NHL is really it starts with the managers. I don't think it can go directly to the competition committee and go to the Board of Governors, I think it has to start with the managers and the, when the next manager's meeting occurs. And usually what happens is the momentum that's created in these scenarios doesn't take place until next season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a manager's meeting in November around the Hall of Fame and then the manager's meeting in March just after the trade deadline. So will it be discussed? Sure, it will be. Is it, is it really a priority? I'm not sure it is. 
Uh, and it only will become a huge priority if the 32 managers believe that it's a huge priority. And at this point, let's face it, only three teams have been affected by it. Edmonton yeah, twice, yeah. Colorado and Calgary. Yep. Excellent as always, John. You're the Alex Karras of NHL analyst. We uh, appreciate that. And co-host of the Bob McCowan <laughs> By the way, I, I do think Karras probably played at about 240 as well. And it's, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> Looking healthy, John. Appreciate it. Feeling good. Feeling good. Have a great day, guys. Hey, y by the way, yes. Western, Western Lacrosse Association, yeah. one of the greatest secrets in our country. Yeah. One of the greatest secrets in our country. Box lacrosse. The way they played it for so many years when I was a kid, I loved going to the Western Lacrosse Association games. Just yep. fantastic. No, nope. uh, uh, agreed, John. Th thanks so much for this. We'll talk some more. Thanks, John Shannon, joining us, uh, NHL analyst.